just before 1981, one of my friends got a CB. I was fascinated by it. It was highly illegal at that moment in time. This is pre-1981. He had this thing and I, I wanted one. You know, he had something oh, I didn't. He could chat to his mates and oh, I didn't even know CB was in the country. I can't even remember if Convoy had been out by then. You know, the film. So moving on, I end up going around his mate's house. His handle was Major Tom, his name was Tibor. He was a well-established breaker. No, he wasn't just an AM or he was a sidebander already. He had a three element beam permanently pointing at the state side. I didn't know none of that at that moment. I just went round his house. He said he'd show me his CB, went upstairs. Even He even peeked out the curtains to make sure there's no old bill about or the busbies or whatever it was which made it even more of a draw, you know. He opens up his airing cupboard. There's two rigs. One's a CB, one's a taxi radio, because his dad was a, a taxi driver. So he's telling this guy, you know, rah, 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 there's a, someone who, who, you know, potentially a new breaker. So this guy says to me, mate, what's his handle gonna be? So my mate turns around, looks me up and down, he turns around and he goes to his mate, yeah, his handle's going to be Fat Man. I'm like, does his T-shirt make me look fat or what? You know, I'm all like paranoid. Not. So moving on in time, I end up doing a bit of wheeling and dealing. I couldn't afford a rig. But I managed to pick up this motorbike and it was a Suzuki GT185. I give 40 quid for it, my mate was in dire straits, that's all the money that I had, but I already knew when he took that money what I was going to do with a bike. And basically I went round one of my mate's house, another guy, I said to him, Mark, I said, do you still got your CB? He said, yes mate, why well, would you ask? I said, do you want to swap it for that motorbike? And this bike was road legal, it was a bit of a an old dog, but it flew this thing for a 185, you know. He goes, yeah, he says, can I have a go on it? Cut a long story short, he went off the road in a big pile of two-stroke smoke and comes back, we've done the deal. I've got a 40-channel AM Bristol with a Turner Plus 2U power microphone, a five-foot fire stick and a DV27 ground plane and an old car battery. That was my first rig and the first thing I ever said on CB was 1.6 for a 10.36 because the braking channel in Luton then was the 1.6. When someone came back, I completely freaked out, turned the rig off, walked out the room, but it weren't me. You know, I can remember that. I went all flushed and everything. So I get, it, you know, moving on, I got into CB and I, I started realising that other people could transmit and receive further than me so then started the things with the antenna my first proper home base aerial was a thing called an Alcom I bought it second hand and I was tucked up a bit to be honest the thing was a pig to SWR in I had no idea what I was doing you know I was just a, a newbie uh, got rid of that I got a 5 8 wave silver rod had that up for ages and then it went on a higher pole you know because height is might and all that i started getting the range i had so many home base aerials i can't remember all of them to be honest but i do remember i got a thing called a clr2 which was a copy of a sigma 2 i believe if you imagine uh, the serio 827 it was a bit like that but without the big coil on it i think it had uh like a ca capacitance hat on the top, like three little legs. Awesome antenna. Uh, I also, once I discovered uh, a sideband, which I'll come to, I then got myself a three element uh, beam and run it flat side. Started getting the DX contacts. But uh, CB wise, 
front, the, the, I've got to get onto the sideband bit because like I, I did explain, my first rig was an AM rig. I went round my friends and he had a sidebander by this point. And once I, once he flicked the high switch onto the triple five, and instead of hearing people effing and blinding and swearing and playing music and threatening to punch each other's lights in and trying to flog anything from a knife and fork set to a, a second hand tablecloth, it was a different world. And I thought, wow, look at this, you know, there's people here, you know, talking a bit of sense. Cut a long story short. And bypassing the fact that I ended up buying my mate's sidebander off him, which turned out absolute rubbish. I saved up me hard earned money and I walked into a CB shop in Luton called Breakers Paradise after some research and I bought myself a brand spanking new Cobra 148 GTL DX off the shelf, unmodified. And I'll tell you what, that it. I got it in like a big bag and I guarded that thing on the way home. 185 quid back in, I don't know, 82, 83, whenever it was, I, I eventually got managed to get this rig. It was a lot of money and it was like highly, highly illegal. You know, it was like one of them, like looking over my shoulder, telling me, mate, you get one of them. Don't you touch my rig. And, uh, there I am, I've got my brand new 148. I'm flicking around, you know, sideband channels, heard these two guys chatting. I thought, oh, you know, it was through listening that I ended up getting the 148, because I thought they sounded great. Anyone who was anyone had a 148. Now there was other good rigs around, I realized that, but I like the sound of the 148, and that's what I got. I heard these two guys and it was like uh, over to you Tom, oh QSL on that, you know they were quite posh, there's me sort of like a snotty nosed Lutonian, well I've done the, the obvious thing you know I've gone on the side, no response, a couple of minutes later on the side, on the side, 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 one of the geezers goes yeah there's someone on here, one of them cb types going on the side. His mate goes, I can't hear him. So the guy comes back, goes, you don't say on the side here. He goes, you say QSK. And I felt like a bit like, oh God, been told off. And they were right snotty with me and they sort of basically snubbed me. They give me the rig check, asked what rig I was on. I walked away from there thinking, I ain't sure I've done the right thing here. If they're all like that, you know. Moving on, again, keeping the video as short as possible. One of the local breakers that got chatting to him, I was telling him what rig I've got, you know, blah, blah, blah. He, go, he had high going five. He goes, oh, he said, I love sideband. He said, let's go on now. Well, it, I won't say his high going five sounded great, but I could hear him, you know. And it become a regular thing. I'd say, Trev, uh, Trev go to, you know, whatever channel, whatever frequency, other side band, blah, blah, we'd be loving it. Well, Trev lived on top of a hill and he had a 20 foot metal scaffolding pole lashed to his chimney with a Sigma 4 on the top. He, he could be heard for miles. Well, these Hooray Henry types eventually found us and started calling in and we were just giving them yeah whatever you know and uh we'd give them attitude but eventually they wound their necks in and realized we were regular we were there for the long haul if they wanted a chat they came in and you know they weren't going to get told off if they said qsk or on the side or whatever and the interest in sideband was rekindled reborn if you like ended up with a beam uh, a vector 4000 I had trust me I had loads of aerials I, I had a good home base set up and uh, part of my problem was was the local topography because what I did I had a radio room and I had a big map of England Scotland Wales 
island. The thing must have been nearly five foot tall. Add it on the wall, and each time I copied someone in a town, I had one of them coloured pins, and I'd stick it in there. Well, I soon realised, you know, there was pins going north, east, a little bit of west, but not a lot to the south. I had the Chilton Hills behind me, so, you know, sometimes I would get someone way, way beyond, near the south coast, if there was a bit of ground wave running. But generally speaking, London weren't great for me. I, I really struggled to get into London. But that was like a learning curve. And to my north, Lucy Farm was there. Now, Lucy Farm's built on top of a hill, so the Lucy Farmers would get out much better than me, you know, which made me strive to get my aerial up bigger, get a bigger aerial, amplifier, bass mic. I went completely mental on it. Now it's 2019 now and I'm still mental on it. You know, it's just one of them hobbies that stuck with me. Over the years I've done fishing, kickboxing, weightlifting, cycling, you know, loads of beer drinking of course, uh, model cars, you know, uh, everything. But I've always sort of came back to the CBs. There's always this bit of a fascination with radio. And if you manage to watch this video so far and you're not on radio yet, go out there and get yourself one, you know. But I've got something for you guys to have a look at. Some of you people that have been on for years, you might be able to relate to what I'm going to show you. This is going back to 1989. Now what I'm going to show you, I was doing previous, but I was unable to. I'm just going to swap over cameras and then you'll see what I'm going to talk about. But if you've watched the video up to this point, I think the best bit is coming because I'm going to enjoy showing you, you guys this next thing. So be right back. Right, hi again, guys. We're on the other camera. And I've just realised there's a fair bit I missed out on the, uh, on the first bit. Just getting myself ready for what I'm going to show you. I'll just show you this table. Now, bearing in mind I'm not a home base, I sort of got a load of rigs, wheeling, dealing, uh, etc. There's the uh, CRE 8900, Ranger 2950, Superstar 3900. There's a rig there that I haven't told anyone I've got yet. It's the Anytone 6666. that rig it looks really dusty but it's for all intents and purposes brand new there's another rig just off camera which is the blue display 3900 a great rig it looks the same as that but it's got a 10 kc jump switchable roger bleat six blocks of 40 Oh, it's mental. It's, it's a lovely rig, and I will do a video on that. Now, the bit I wanted to show you. Now, you might see my hand covering certain parts up with these. QSL cards. Some people might even be thinking, what, what, what's one of them? Don't even know what one of them is. Now we'll be covering up part of this because it's got my address on it. There you go, it's a QSL card from the Netherlands. And I'll let it spin it over, I just want to cover the address. Right, it's from the Netherlands. And that was the 3rd of the, is that the 10th, 1989. The guy was using a President Jackson, some sort of, it's like a K40 aerial, DV2758. Uh, this one was actually addressed to the girl I was with at the time, seat cover, whatever you want to call her. 
This is another one from the World Amateurs Club International DX Group Pulling all over the world. Now I've got a few of these cars from various people now Again, I really want something to cover this this over I'll get this in front of the camera now 15th of the 2nd 1989 look at the mode 26 megahertz and this guy had a superstar 2000 look at the amplifier a 1 kilowatt phantom antenna he was mobile using two four foot whips and it says nice to speak with you from my 18 wheeler mobile I was in the state of Illinois at the time it's from Dan YDX364 is that something like that uh, some people back then used to send pictures the picture of some random Italian guy again it was addressed to the old seat cover and these are all from 1989 that was the year I got myself a PO box okay it's another one I might have to cover up an address here again no it's all right and I can't really that's a I'm not sure what that is some sort of American coinage it says hi Lorraine thanks for the QSA QSL and the card I can't really read all of it something about Boston there you go blah 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 uh, what else we got another one with another one that's just I think must be the local area I believe that's another one from Italy I'll show you some of the random stuff that people sent you I'm hoping some of you might remember all of some of these cards and got a similar card you know from different DX groups from years gone by Echo Foxtrot DX group unit number 04 Again, it was to the seat cover. All, all from my house, my aerial, my rig. Eddie. Let me just take this off, see if I can read a bit. Oh, my TXRX Cobra 148 GTL DX 15 watts microphone, Silver Eagle. And the antenna was uh, Tel Aviv's half wave. There you go. Echo Fox Drop DX Group Barcelona Got no idea what that says <laughs> That's my old uh, call sign Sugar Radio 50 Rosano Conferring QSO date 15th of the 3rd 1989 Frequency 26455 USB He was using a Galaxy Saturn Blah 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 This one from Istanbul One Tango India International the X station Turkey again 1999 26 megs 
Galaxy 2, 25 watts. Mics a Densai CB2002. Antenna a Skylab quarter wave. Uh, what's this one? This one's from someone in the UK. Uh, Derek, I think his name was. Daddy Long Eggs. to the seat cover 3rd of December 1989 mode USB channel 3 alpha just want to show you some more there's just I've got a big box of them here picture of a guy with his dog basically says first mobile contact and his dog was a something or other terrier someone sent a picture of the house it's in the same sleeve so I presume it's in Norway this here I've not opened this in years I can't even tell you what this is I'll open it off camera. Some sort of map with a load of writing which I can barely read. It's another little thing, what's this? From Black Sabbath. It's to my mate Gary, he used to come up and DX from my house. Barcelona, Spain. So come on, guys, comments. Uh, someone from uh, Kings Lynn, Norfolk. He was using a Uniden 2830 and a 5.8 wave high gain antenna. Things in. QSL from Tango for two. Cut long story short, there's loads of them. I know I've got some from Turkey. I think there might be one or two more from America. I think the best one that I've actually got still is the, the one from the guy running a kilowatt from his 18 wheeler. This was all going on in 1989, and I was right in the thick of it, I might add. So yeah, I've been on for a little while, and I've picked up a little bit of knowledge over the years. And I wouldn't say I am the fountain of knowledge on rig, but I've picked up a few bits over the years, you know, like you might do. And I'm uh, still thoroughly enjoying it. Well, guys... And ladies, it's late. I've been at work all day. But I just wanted to get this video out of the way, just to sort of get it off my chest. It's one I've been promising a couple of you fellas for ages. And uh, no doubt there'll be bits that I think, oh God, I missed that. So check out the description. Have a read through that. If there's any bits I've missed, I'll add it in there. But most of all, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it, people. Look out for the next video.